Hello friends <clears throat> and welcome to another stream. Uh, today we're doing some more um, REST programming and open source contribution. So I'm currently working on a PR to a project called Git UI. Uh, it's a terminal UI or terminal client for Git written in Rust. Kind of looks like this. Uh, I can get it up and running locally, oh, or not. Uh, well, first of all, we need to be in the correct directory. That's a good start, there you go. So this is it running live, you could say. Uh, and uh, let's see, let's jump over to the correct branch. Uh, we'll just discard those changes, there we go. There we go, okay. So what I'm trying to get working is a better, um, or rather support for multi-line commit messages. So at the moment, uh, let's just make a change here that I can recognize. Oh, that gets uh, fixed. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's just do this. So when we change this, we can see the change show up here in Git UI. We can stage it and we can enter a commit message. Hello there. Uh, the problem is I want multi-line support and the way I've decided to implement this is through, um, through an external editor, much like how Git does it natively. natively, natively. So uh, let's see. I got it working with uh, just pressing uh, Shift C instead of C to to launch it. Oh, or not? Oh, oh right. I haven't. Uh, let's run this again. I switched branches after I built it. So if we now rebuild it on the correct branch. We should any second now. Here we go. Uh, this launches vi uh, Vim, and I can, in theory, type in a commit message here. There are some changes. Uh, and when I save this, all lines not starting with a hash will be considered a commit, uh, part of the commit message but very much how very much like how how git does it natively uh, there have been some speed bumps along the way and uh, in accordance with or rather in in collaboration with the maintainer of the project i've worked my way through most of them and i think we're currently at the last major uh roadblock let's say so i'm hoping that if i get this fixed i'll be able to go through some of the smaller things that i've noticed along the way that needs to be fixed before i can submit a fully complete pr um but if i get this last thing working i'm i'm thinking we're pretty much golden so first of all uh let's just close this down and Hold down the latest changes because I know that he committed some changes today that will fix some of the troubles that I'm having. So let's see. Um, let's just unstage and remove this. Uh, yes, it's good. And we'll rebase this onto master. And I am surprised if we. Oh, no conflicts. Wow. Well, that's nice. <laughs> uh, okay, good, good. So let's see. Let's just build this again and bring up the editor. Let's see what we've got. Uh, right, um, let's just add uh, info. To have something to um, there we 
go. All right. I saw it still works apparently. Oops. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. Okay. Well, this all seems to be working just as we expect. Uh, let's see. Oh, hold on a second. Just got a got a message. Uh, hmm. That's just saying that the chat is not working. I, it was working yesterday, and I haven't changed anything that I know of. Hmm. Let's type hello in the chat and see if that works. Okay. Hmm. Uh, let me try. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, let's. Um... Right. Let's see if uh... <laughs> See if it works now. If we do this, okay. I can see my chat. I can't write in it though. Is that because I'm not logged in? I am not too familiar with uh, Twitch, so I have to admit. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Show message. Blah blah. blah. Okay, this is strange. Is anyone able to to write uh, write anything into the chat? Uh, I see that I can't write anything in here, but I'm thinking that might be because I'm not logged in. <laughs> Sign up to experience the best of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a bit pretentious. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, if anyone's able to <laughs> to to run the chat, that would be excellent to see. Um, if not, I'll have to look up the help documentation on Twitch to see how to enable it. it, it there is some kind of followers only chat and stuff, but that's turned off, so it seems to me that it should be working. Hmm. Okay. Um I'm just gonna continue speaking into the void for a little while and see if it improves. Uh, okay, let's see. So yes, uh, the current problem is when you launch the external editor from Git UI, uh, Git UI has a background thread running which polls for input, uh, keyboard events. This And it does this in this loop here specifically. And it will spend uh, two seconds waiting for input, and then it will abort and basically run the loop again. Okay, I'm seeing test now, what makes the worst? So hey, Stefan, it works now, apparently. Seems you figured it out. <laughs> yeah, so um, the the loop is running in the background, and when I launch, for example, Vim inside of the terminal, 
this loop will continue to run and still capture uh, capture input events uh, when the user types in the keyboard. So GitUI and Vim are both fighting for the input events. So what I want to do is suspend GitUI's uh, capturing of input events and let Vim have them f um, on its own. So me and the maintainer have been uh, discussing it a bit back and forth uh, to see if we can get away. <laughs> now I can also hear you. Good. <laughs> um, a way to uh, resolve this. And as you can see, I've, I've noted this, uh, my solution, which is not good enough uh, <laughs> with it to do, to do it properly. Um, yes. So let's see. Um, because what I'm doing currently is that I don't run the uh, the polling for the key events if this uh, atomic U size is set to a even number. Uh, am I saying that right? No. If uh, if if it's an even number, do the polling. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I just increment that every time I need to turn it on and off. Uh, this is just. A, quick hack that I put together just to get a proof of concept working. And um, we have been going a few rounds f trying to figure out a best way to do this. And we think we're m closing in on a, on a solution. So first of all, uh, did you merge the latest changes? Yes, yes, I just did. Um, or rather we based. So I'm currently on top of uh, uh, the newest master from just uh, under an hour ago, actually, half an hour ago. So. Uh, so that should be should be good. Uh, let's see. So here is the logic that will um, launch the external editor. And the problem is, it isn't a problem if you're using an a GUI editor outside of the terminal. So if you're launching Visual Studio Code or Atom or some kind of other editor. It's not a problem. It's only a problem when it launches inside of the terminal as both applications are, are fighting over the key events. So here I'm suspending polling, then running the editor and then, um, then resuming polling down here. But now we should have some new stuff available to us. So if we have a look in main, let's start there. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see, we should have some new stuff. My main RS is definitely not up to date. Okay, so apparently, uh, oh no no no, oh, my bad, my bad. It's not uh, properly rebased. You're entirely right. Let's try that again. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Ah, there we go. I was expecting some merge conflicts. Yes, let's delete it. Okay. Choose master. Uh, result. Oh. Uh, what's this then? Okay. Uh, we'll just remove that. Uh, we don't really need it. Can I just discard those? Yes. Continue. Polar is, is gonzo, right? Uh, so it's uh, complaining about these. That's okay. Uh, let's see. What changes is it complaining about? Uh, that's fine. We don't need that anymore. Uh, yeah, so 
just like this. Any other? Nope. That's about it. Uh, yep. That's deleted. That's fine. Alright, let's have a look at these. Yeah, this is old code. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it for that one. <laughs> it has problems every step of the way. Oh, okay, let's have a look at this. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, yeah, we want to keep this. Yeah. Uh, so add these three lines. Oh. Come on. There we go. Any. Yeah, so this is fun, uh, watching me, um, okay, I'm guessing we need both here, so we're just going to do this, then this, look, yep, yeah, that looks right, and that's that one, just watching me do, <laughs> doing a, um, yeah, we definitely want, we want this one, doing a rebase, that's fun, and still we're going to keep the deleted, uh, File, continue, and we're back. Yes, there we go. Uh, let's just uh, delete this file, discard. Now we are where we should be. Yes. Sorry. No, no, no. This is fine. Uh, this is part of uh, collaborating. Um, okay. Let's see. Aha. Now, uh, input RS, you say. Pull duration, one second. Okay, that's, um, that's good. Okay. Desired state, receiver, input event. This is either an event or an input state. Input state is either paused or polling. Okay, these are the ones you mentioned to me in the Discord. Uh, let's see. Self-poll. Oh, there we go. Okay. Set polling. All right, so that's the receiver. That's okay. So that's encapsulated in the input now. So I'm guessing this is... Yeah, right. Input new. Here we go. And then we use the input. Okay, yeah, we reassign it to Rx input. Right, right, right. This is familiar territory. And while external editor is open. Yeah, this is our to do. Any work pending. Set polling. So when there is no work pending, enable polling. That's what I'm reading. This just goes through all of this. Okay. Some major changes here uh, <laughs> to how uh, how state flows. So have to read up a bit. Uh, okay. Mm hmm. Let's see. Okay, just to check, uh, let's just make a change here. Some kind. Um, do a log. So if we do this, go over here. Oh, we need to stage it first. Okay, so this seems to be fine. Great, great. Okay, 
So that seems to be working. So what we need now specifically is um, suspend polling uh, key input polling right here and assume key input polling here. And I'm guessing that we want to do this through the queue that's um, present in app. So let's see, scroll up. Instead of here, we have a queue. And uh, let me think. Um, input, but let's look at main. Okay, so what I'm reading here is that if at this point, we should disable polling if we are launching an external editor, right? So, we could either I'm thinking we're doing this through uh, an event in the queue. Yeah, you could add a queue event that flips a switch in app apparatus. Yeah, then switch. Then switch then can be read from main or at the mark to do. Yeah, okay. Then we're thinking alike. It's basically what I what I did with this. So <clears throat> uh, let's basically do the same. Uh, let's see if I remember what I did. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, we need one or more of these. Uh, this could be. Hmm. Should we use two different ones for enabling and disabling maybe? Well, set polling of a bool. Suspend polling? Hmm. Enable polling. Set polling. True. Yeah. That's kind of what it says in the input. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll do it like that. Then, just to remember to do it, we'll just add it right here at once. Uh, self.q borrow mute, push back, uh, in, oop, in, oop, there we go, internal event, wow, okay, here we go, <laughs> uh, set polling, no, 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 false, uh, re-enable it here, I'm guessing that we need to do some kind of, um, suspension or, or looping here to wait for it to hmm no that won't work. I'll come back to that. Um me and me and the maintainer discussed maybe ha waiting to launch the external editor until we know the polling has stopped. But I'm a bit uncertain how we want to do that in the best way. Ah, I'll come back to it. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we got it in the queue, which means it will basically it will bubble up, bubble uh, up somewhere here. And this are his inputs, and then it will be passed here into app event. And inside of app event, we can check uh, because it will process queue over here. And inside process queue, we reset the flags. Um, this is not the case now. So it goes through all of them. Process internal event. And at the bottom here, we, we will 
handle it. Uh, so this will be internal event set polling. Um, yeah. Sure. Uh, I guess I'm right here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not too fond of this naming. I'm, I'm horrible at naming things. Mm, yeah, not too fond of this. <sighs> but okay. Ah. Oops. Ah, that's a little bit. set polling to set polling actually yes yeah, the set polling needs to happen when the shift C is pressed and the code that you write in the toggle on shift C you need to wait for the new input event that indicates that the polling now is suspended right gonna have to wait the uh, right here wait for polling to be suspended hmm I'm a bit uncertain to be honest how I want to do that without um, without uh, locking the thread. Yeah. Right. Uh, and also in main, let's yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Um, oh, right, I need, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, let's see, oh no, that's not what I wanted, app. Uh, let's see. Fires redraw. Here we go. Uh, over function sent polling. I've had this keyboard for a month and I'm still typing wrong. Uh, I'm typing the wrong at the bottom, wrong buttons all the time. <laughs> it's really annoying, but on the other hand, I'm trying to unlearn like 15 years of muscle memory, so it's not going to be that easy. Okay, let's see. Main RS, yes. Let's see. So if this is false and oh, this shouldn't be named that at all. That's that's not the right one. But it's called set polling here. Why is it turning up yellow here? Ugh. There we go. So if it doesn't have any work or set polling is true. It should name polling, yes. So if this is false, but this is true. It still enables polling. Ah, that's not right. Hmm. Hmm. 
You can remove the any work pending. Okay. I'm guessing because if if this if this should stay in, I just said that there was any logic. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Because well, if we wanted that to stay in, I'm guessing that we should check if any of them are false and then set it to false if any of them are. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this will suspend the polling, I'm hoping. Uh, let's see if we can just jump into input and... Let's just add a polling for key events. Let's see if this builds and take it from there. Uh, do cache, yes. Yes. Waiting for the build. Ba, 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 da. Free musical entertainment. With this in place, you can check out the first if in the app event. The EV is either regular input. Regular input event that was already processed or new or new now a state change of input for change. Right, right. So uh, inside of app, um, I can check um, in, in the event thing. Right here, right? Yeah. So if it's an input event, do what it does be did before. But we could also do an if here, I'm guessing. To check whether or not to launch Vim. I'm just a bit uncertain of how to wait without locking everything. Oh, let's see. Ah, right. 962. We need to add the uh, here. Uh, set polling should be true. An initializer of app. Wow. Oh, wait, right, right. This is an initializer. Right. I thought it was recognizing you as an as an initializer, but that's not the case. That's just kind of convention, not a hard rule. Well, let's see. Okay. Uh, wrong window. Oh, right. uh, yeah. uh, so in theory, it should be. Oh, yeah, this is not suspended. Oops. What did I do wrong? Yeah, this is still pulling for key events. Yeah, that's not good. Okay. Uh, so, this is agony. <laughs> there we go. Right in this, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that didn't work out. Um, let's have a look over here. So 
So true is it's enabled. I'm guessing that's as straightforward as I think it is. So set state enabled. We'll start it inside of the arc atomic bool. If it is true, let's see, arc desired. Let's see, this returns desired state. Could be still buggy. I wasn't able to test properly. Okay. Um, so we are looking at this. So this is a clone of the arc. We spawn this. Go into the loop. We load this. And if current state is false, We send input state polling. Hmm. And was it the, then was it the current state is true? Right, because we're reversing. Right, right, right. So it's sending a message that it's starting to poll to poll now. Right. Okay, I get it. <laughs> <clears throat> so yes, uh, if self poll is some of right, uh, yes, so that returns some. Send the input, and this is the if it's false, send a message that it's paused and set current state to false. Right, and then it loops. Okay. Right, right, right. So once we update the desired state, this arc desired should be updated as well. Because that's how arc works. Yes, okay. So let's just do some simple logging here, I guess. Someday I'm gonna set up proper de uh, debugging, but uh, not today. Uh, polling, set to, uh, polling is true. Let's see here, polling is false. Okay, so let's see if we, uh, sure, 
let's jump in here. Okay, this is not working, right? Okay. <laughs> there we go. Let's go down here and have a look at the logs. Pulling is true. Pulling for key events, right. Okay, so it's not suspended, it's suspending properly. Uh, let's see. Let's see if the messages are correct all the way through. So first we're calling this with set polling to false. This is added to the queue, which is then read in the main loop on this thing. Because there was an input event, it goes through, looks at the event, right? Whoops, not paste. Ah, oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> All the wrong buttons. Uh, here we go. Nope, that's read in app. Uh, right, okay. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get the input event, and then all the way down here, it, uh, here we go. Process queue. Right. On the input event. Uh -huh. Then we process the queue. Over here. And all the way down here, we're setting sit polling to the value passed in, which is false, right? And then in back in the main loop, we use that to set this. The queue is app internal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this looks right, if nothing else, at least to me. Hmm. Let's see what this. Uh, uh, let's see. Setting polling to. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Someday, my fingers are going to do the right thing. Have a look at that. Did you switch to another keyboard layout? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I bought a new keyboard, a uh, fancy, fancy one, and I switched key keyboard layout from uh, my good old trusty Norwegian keyboard layout to, uh, to English International. So all the symbols are all messed up. <laughs> so all my muscle memory that I've built up for the last decade and a half are just gone out the window. <clears throat> same, same happened to me three years ago. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Still getting the, the fight over the keyboard events. So, yeah. There we go. Uh, let's see. So look at this. Setting polling to true. Did it set it to false at any point? Uh, setting. Oh, this is key sensitive. Polling. Oops. Truly. Going to oh, man. Okay, that's not good. False. True. Yes. Why is it always returning true? That's weird.
Believe me, it's worth it though. You have so much better for coding. Can you set a bat down there to follow the log from? Yeah, I really like the the US keyboard level coding. Uh, once I once I first discovered, or first looked into the US keyboard layout, I I discovered why programming uses so many weird symbols. <laughs> They're so much more easily accessible in the US layout. Uh, let's see. I think I could. I think there's like a follow thing in uh, uh, follow. Uh, nope. Um, well, maybe there isn't. Maybe that's one of the. Uh, paging pager wrap. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Maybe I have to use uh, less or something. No XP with the team looks in that. Yeah. No, it, it usually works pretty fine, but I... Uh, what's dash T do? <laughs> oh, it's so... I, I used it. I haven't used less in months. So remember nothing. <laughs> dash T. Tags file. Right, that's just the... Uh, right, uh, follow, isn't it? Just F dash F? Is that right? Uh, following description, blah blah blah. Blah 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 Followed, followed, followed. Yeah, it is dash f, okay. Nice. Dash f. Uh, keep your eye log. There we go. Yay! Oh, old man is highlighting. Uh, yes, let's see. Ooh, what happens when we... Huh, I'll have to look into... Uh, let's see. Oh, there's not much happening over here. Uh, okay, now we're at the end. I don't think it's, uh, is it dash T for ta tail? No. Oh, no, that was for, uh, let's see. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's, it's one of these. <laughs> is F in here? Yeah, it is. Keep trying to read the end of the file is reached normally. Tail of the file, so this is similar to lowercase f. Okay, but how does it differ? Uh, dash f. Forces no regular files to be open, blah blah blah. And this, I also have to. Shift G to go to the end. Yeah, I got to the end, but it didn't seem to follow the file. Quit if one screen, cause less automatically it works. It is not what I want at all. Why are these different from the ones I read earlier? That's strange. Fail. Oh, just an F. No. Scroll forward and keep trying to read when the end of the file is reached. Or I could just use tail. That's that works too. <laughs> oh, right. Uh tail dash F. Here we go. Right. So we're definitely setting pull into true. Seems a bit spammy to do this all the time. Okay, well. Hmm. Well, 
Okay, so <laughs> what's this then? So it's not running as often, but it's still setting it true all the time. Is the wrong value stored in the app thing? Is that it? Okay. Um, there we go. Um, let's just stop this. Tail sucks as soon as you want to stop and scroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe uh, less uppercase F. Is that what it says? That was a trial directory. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. It seemed like that did what I wanted to do. Scroll forward. Right. Ah, right. So maybe if you do this, uh, get your eye log, and then it's F. Aha! Here we go. Uh, interrupt to abort. Okay. How do we interrupt? Like this. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so now, <laughs> now we got logging uh, working. Um, so it's setting it to true all the time. So it kind of seems like this is not working. So let's put a log in here. Um, app dot set polling. Uh, set to set polling. Slows down everything. So let's abort this. Go back up a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, can search. Uh, app dot. What's that? Ooh, that's not. The, wait, what? That's interesting. Let's search for app. That's all over the place. Let's search for app with an uppercase A. Not found at all. Oh, I think I know. Says Stefan. Reaches line at all. The internal queue is never processed. It pauses the main thread when running by. Oh. That's interesting. That makes sense. Um, but why does this keep running then? Right after putting the uh, thing in the queue. Yeah. But shouldn't this pause to then? Or does this run separate from that again? Because it, it does report the setting polling to true, which means this is being called. It 
really feels like we're hitting up against the uh, the async wall here. <laughs> so what we actually want to do is suspend right here uh, and come back. And this is basically async await. <clears throat> so this is question actually no something is actually no we just don't know yet very soon we may, might might very well know uh, the set polling to false needs to happen in the shift c event right so instead of instead of using the queue Ah, right, okay. So this leads back to one of the ideas that I had last time I looked at this, which is then all the Vi opening needs to happen once the polling is confirmed or stopped. Yeah. So this kind of goes back to one of the things that I considered uh, last time I looked at this, where I wondered not too big a fan of it because it kind of uh, crosses uh, domain boundaries, you could say, but where it should be more positive than that event. Yes. Uh, which was uh, that this because this actually gets the event uh, blah, 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 somewhere up here. Where is it? Here. Since it knows about the event here, it could, in theory, just stop itself right here before sending anything through the channels, which would kind of solve the problem. But that means that this general purpose um, input event handler thingy would have to know app specific things which is it, it, it to me it feels like you're kind of muddying the fields but, but um it would solve <laughs> this very elegantly <laughs> then we didn't have to wait or anything <laughs> no 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 <laughs> yeah that's what i'm thinking too yeah okay at least we're <laughs> we're agreed on that uh, <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Um, so this is in the over here. So inside of process internal event, uh, we get the event, right? Uh, no, no, no. We do, 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 do where are you? <clears throat> so no, no, it's all there. Not sure I follow. Um Here it's checking which key was pressed. Wow, it's too long since I did this. Um, uh, let's see. Because I know that I did something in here. Didn't I? Wow. I. Where did I do this? Oh man, it's so long since I hooked this up that I don't even remember where I did it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Well, I do know that it's in here. Editor. There we go. Open commit editor. The place where you now trigger your commit using 
via logic needs to only request the polling to stop, nothing of the rest. Right, okay. Um, that seems about right. Uh, do, 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 this is what I want to do. Inside of changes. Right, right, right. Because it's from the changes component. Then once the polling stopped, We'll send the message into app event. Right, because when the polling stops, we can launch the, yeah, okay. That makes sense. Um, I'm guessing that we want to store some kind of state that tells what action to take when once, once polling stops. But at the moment, it's only gonna be the external editor, so I'm not gonna add something like that now. We might have to consider that for a later time if we want to do something similar. I don't know. Anyway, uh, open commit editor. If self uh, blah, 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 this is just copied from here, I'm guessing. Yep. So don't do this, but instead set polling to false. Uh, it's already set, sent in the app event, and this can be forwarded to the place your logic runs now. Because now it's safe to start by, since we're not running or pulling anymore. Yeah. So we're setting this to f uh, stop pulling in here. Then, we go into here. And we are, because once this stops, we're gonna get an input. Okay, right, right. Now, now things are starting to uh, <laughs> come together. So right here, this is what we want. <clears throat> uh, blah, 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 blah. Can we do enough? Uh, is um, let's no. Um, what's uh, what's the syntax? If let input event input. Yeah. So uh, if let input event state um, hmm, polling state I guess equals e v yeah exactly a heart <laughs> What what I was thinking was um, uh, once we receive the polling, uh, the input event state thing here. Um, right now we can assume that we want to launch the editor, but thinking ahead, if we might want to do something else when stopping the polling, but that could we'll just have to look at that. Uh, I don't want to look into that now. <laughs> um, got enough problems already making this work uh, let's see uh, well what am I doing um, uh, this is in input oh, what am I doing now input state So if it's paused, then we are, we should just queue the event, shouldn't we? Queue, follow mute, push back, internal event. I know, but let's cross that bridge once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't want to use Q for this. Okay. Um, okay. 
Just call the place. You have your exam. Right, 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 right. Wow. Okay, I'm uh... a. <laughs> Self dot uh, commit open. No. Show. Editor. There you go. That, that's a lot easier. Uh, we don't really need that uh, input event either anymore. No, 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 no input event, but uh, in internal event. Where are those stored again? Here, I'm guessing. Yep. So, I'm just going to remove this actually. Yes. So this passes to this and it resumes to nothing. Yeah. Let's try. Yeah. I think this is the right way. I got everything the way I want it. Uh, let's see. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> crap. Uh, no, 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 no recording. <laughs> no. Ah, <laughs> uh, crap. I'm locked in. Let's see. There we go. Um, and let's run that again. Oh, lots of errors. Uh, let's see. Uh, binary operation. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Um, sometimes, so, uh, these are not, that, that's not how we do things. <laughs> uh, polling states. Yes. No, I am yeah. Three ninety two. Uh, right, that doesn't exist anymore. Let's just remove that. And uh, let's see. Uh, it's the same one. Yep. Right. Oh, right. Hundred ninety. That, no, 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 no. Does the writer plugin show compiler errors? Um, yes, but it's a bit bonkers at the moment. Um, I haven't really looked into it, but for some reason it freaks out for... Uh, it doesn't even recognize the result. So there's clearly something very wrong. Um, and I haven't spent any time looking into it. <laughs> But usually, yes, it will uh, show me errors in line. Okay. This is a test message. Okay, that all works nicely. Uh, let's see if, oh. That is interesting. What are we doing now? We are stuck. Right, because we aren't re... <laughs> uh, okay. So we're launching the editor. We come along here. We don't need this. All these lines can go away. This returns. 
Okay, maybe that's enough. Yeah, but we also have to do... Um... Oh, every time. Um... Can I get the wrong term with term, uh, break the terminal session? As we see now. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm guessing it's because of the, um, what's it called, the, the alternate screen thingy, which I can't remember the name of. We might, might have to um, do some panic handling and return to the regular, yeah, yeah. So you agree. Um, and the raw mode, right. Uh, I'm guessing that if I, uh, what's it called? Top, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. If you do this. There we go. Kill 3018. There we go. Don't need the 2Q events there anymore. We should have to reset the poll uh, polling though. Should we not? Since the show terminal now blocks and we could do those two things in app after it. Right, right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, 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 yes. Right here. So this can set request redraw to true. Like so, and it can uh, set polling to true also. Right O. And we don't. Oh. Okay, that was interesting. Then we don't need these at all. Uh, let's. Quick, 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 away. There we go. Do we need any of these events then? No. I think they both can go. Because this doesn't need to happen then. Nor this. And then we can remove these three lines, four lines. We can we have to update here somewhere. There we go. Those can go. Let's see if we forgot something. Lots of things. Okay, I prefer starting at the top. Oh, right, I need to keep the fields. <laughs> okay, let's keep the fields. There we go. <laughs> Not so fast to remember the least state. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Gotta be the ear. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, in changes. Right, right, right. That still needs to set. The polling needs to be false. Right, because it does no direct access to the parent component, does it? Probably shouldn't mutate, though. Ooh. Now it gives access to the queue for exactly this reason. Right. Uh, okay, so we need to chain keep that event though. Well, maybe we could just I almost switched to Alacrity of TMX the other day, seeing you using it. Yeah, it's it's quite nice. Um, it was a bit, it was um. A bit of an uphill struggle getting started with Tmux, and I actually, I, 
I made it, I made the mistake of using a custom config for Tmux when I started using it. And when I reformatted my computer, I started with a blank um, setup and I actually prefer it. The problem is, do I see you have as well? Can I click, click the links in the console? What should you do always? Yeah, right, uh, yeah, yeah. Links in the console. Um, I've, I've just gotten used to it, I guess. Um, ah, links to the errors. Oh, right, huh. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see if we change this to be suspend polling we can let's just do one of these er, set polling yes and Links to the errors, the file URLs, which you can click an item to. Yeah, that, I, I will admit that's probably very useful. Um, at this point, though, I'm just so used to not being able to do that that I, I don't really notice it anymore. But yeah, sometimes I wish I could click links. I I, I sometimes still do it. <laughs> But I really like Relacrity really, though. I actually sometimes for some some especially when viewing long logs, I really notice um, Alacrity being faster than iTerm or the built-in terminal. Have you always used V key bindings? Oh, I've used them for about a year, I think. And at this point, I really prefer them everywhere. So all my editors have uh, have uh, Vim key bindings. Is it tough to switch? Um, it was a bit an, a bit weird in the beginning. I keep hearing how it makes you more productive. I'm not really sure I buy into that though. <laughs> After the born face, I guess a lot of people will claim that, but I'm not. That's not really the main thing for me. The, the main things for me actually using Kvim key bindings are all the usual shortcuts are the same in all the editors. So I don't have to do a lot of custom things to make the shortcuts work the same. So if I switch between um, the JetBrains IDEs, uh, uh, and of course, <laughs> JetBrains IDEs have different shortcuts on Windows and Mac. So that's a switch. And also switching to Visual Studio Code uh, which also has a completely different set of key bindings. But with the Vim plugin everywhere, it just, they all work the same, which is really nice. And of course it works the same way if you launch Vim in the terminal too. So that's an added, added bonus. And I, I could claim that, you know, that it makes you kind of faster at navigating, typing in, in a document, but um, I'm not really sure it makes you more productive but it kind of feels, it feels like, which is probably the worst metric to use, but it feels like I can can get my thoughts from my brain into the computer faster with Vim key bindings. But again, typing is only like what 10 or 20% of your code, time spent coding. Most of the time just thinking or looking at code. <laughs> so optimizing like a 10 or 20% of your, of your time is kind of a micro, Micro, um, what's it called? Micro, uh, <laughs> oh my God, uh, brain fart. Uh, micro optimization, that's the one. So consistency main driver? Yeah, kinda. And I also like that there's a lot of nice shortcuts for selecting text or uh, selecting ranges of text, like switch everything within these parentheses which you kind of get with um, with uh, the JetBrains IDEs, but it's there's 
it's it's some of it it's, it's better and recently I've really really gotten into macros which took me a long time but now I'm really starting to dig it <laughs> where you can basically just make small uh, small sequences of, of uh, keystrokes and then replay them over and over which is super nice if you want to do the same kind of editing a lot of times um, instead of a, a in at work one of the projects I'm working on there's a lot of repetitive code where it's like uh, field one, field two, field three, field four, field five, and then you want to rename. Uh, uh, you want to do something with every, with every line that's more complex than just like uh, like vertical more uh, more complex than just doing uh, this. Uh, this you want something more than this, so you might want to I don't know get to the first parentheses and add something to the beginning of the thing or whatever. So you might, you can do make a macro instead and it will repeat the same keystrokes over and over, which is super nice. Took me almost a year to start using it, but now I'm really into it. <laughs> But yeah, the consistency is really nice, and there's a lot of like third-party or not third-party, but a lot of different software that just supports Vim bindings. For example, I'm using Insomnia for like testing REST APIs, and they support Vim bindings. I use RunJS to do like um, simple write some write, write some JavaScript to see if it works. That supports Vim bindings, so it works a lot of places, and it's just nice having the same shortcuts everywhere. Oh, Sublime Support. Yeah, okay. Yeah, macros are supported in the Vim, Vim plugin. That's uh, that's what's nice about it. <laughs> uh, let's see. This seems to work fine. Oops. Hey. Ooh! <laughs> yes! It seems to be working. Okay, this is nice. Oh, and, and also another uh, nice thing about being used to Vim bindings. Almost all the Unix tools support Vim bindings. So navigating up and down with uh, H, J, K, L, and uh, the Control D and U and all that stuff. Yeah, that usually works in most of the tools, uh, Unix tools, including Bat or, or a lot of other stuff. That's also quite nice. So let's see. Uh, yeah, we're. It works. <laughs> yeah, I saw the issue about uh, Vim bindings in Git UI. Maybe your next challenge. <laughs> I, I, I have considered it. <laughs> I saw you wanted to solve it by by introducing custom key bindings, so it was a bit more bit more hassle than just add direct support. My my initial thought was just to to um, just set up the bindings uh, because I don't think I haven't checked properly, but I, but I didn't see any of the required buttons being already allocated apart from H for help. But I thought, hmm, I can just bind that Shift H <laughs> and get to get that get it working that way. But um, then I saw the issue, and and uh, yeah, I thought, well, that is actually a much nicer solution, being able to just use custom key binding. So, uh, guess it's not the easy way, uh, easy way out. Okay, so this is working as it should, which is nice. This is working. Now though, let's see if the okay there we go. That's the jittering that I saw last time. Why does that happen though? Uh, last time I timed it to every five seconds. So let's see. It jitters on thirty-eight, and if it jitters again on forty-three, yeah, it does. Okay. 
So every five seconds it does this. So I'm guessing it has something to do with the polling because I know that that happens every five seconds too. Uh, too. But it's so weird though. Why does it do that? And it only does that if I do the request redraw thing. Yeah, because the input polling is one second. It doesn't happen every, every one second. It, it's exactly every five seconds regularly. And it's only after I've been inside Vim and returned. So it seemed, and it, it's the same jitter that the redraw thing produces. So it feels very much like it's redrawing everything every five seconds. Look at tick internal. Okay. That's five seconds. Right, right. Because it, it uses that to update stuff. That's five seconds, right, right. Well, that's also a nice thing about the Vim bindings. You, uh, the, there's a lot of navigation for the jumping the next instance of this word and searching through, and this instant search thing like this. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> Let's make a ticker. Then there's the app update. Yep. Everything updates. Then everything's okay. But why does it redraw everything though? That seems so weird. Let's see. Uh, which one is it that I want? Uh, this one. Request, blah, 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 blah. Something in there might lead to a retry. Do you, um, do you leave the once read or the true afterwards? Or do you toggle it back? Oh, right. Oh, right, right, right. No, wait. It should be doing the right thing, shouldn't it? Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, there's a breakpoint for some reason. Uh, let's see. Ah, here we go. Inside process queue, it resets, or it should at least do it. Ooh, maybe it's not. Let's have a look at the, where are you, draw. Let's have a look here, what this does. Requires free draw. <laughs> Still not the. Uh... There we go. What are you talking about after? I could probably just reset it here, though, to ensure that it's always just done once. This is a mute, yeah, it's a mutable reference. Ah, right, 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 it's, it's uh, not public, but it could probably reset it just by, hmm. I think I did it in, in here just to make sure, or just to, to not expose it directly, I guess. Uh, yeah. Let's see what it says. Um, <laughs> also, there's no evidence here and here. Don't need those. Uh, 
nice. Let's go. Oh, let's go up here. Launch Vim. The only thing is, it's a bit slow to launch Vim, but it, as a result of the wait, waiting for the poll. Should we maybe pop a UI or something? Okay. Jittering is back. What's it say? Requires redraw is true. Right. It's not reset. Oh, because we don't send an event. Yeah. Hmm. So is there like a... No, because I just called update. Yeah, so in theory, if we send another event, like open the commit dialog, I guess, that should probably make it stop. Yep. Right. Okay, that actually made sense. Okay. <laughs> That's good. We could, in theory, set it to false here. That feels a bit weird. Doesn't it? Because in theory, then, if there's a git event first, for now, it's still totally a bad writing to draw. Okay. Kind of makes sense. Let's see. Friend Republic, oh. working in C sharp for daytime, so it's sometimes hard to to context uh, switch. Um, mm, yeah, sure. Yourself. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, I hate writing that. It feels so clunky to my fingers. It requires redraw. Or you make it at once a single redraw or something. Then you could have a getter that internally also sets back to false once queried. Ooh, I like that one a lot better. Yes, yes, yes. Um. Uh, let's see. Okay, so if this is true, set it to false and return true. Here. Because now it's working. 
Who's just showing me squigglies? I don't know. <laughs> Do we want to rename the variable though? I think it actually works just calling it requires redraw. I'll, I'll leave it like that for now. And then once we read it in this one, yes, and draw. that here we should read it here and it resets and all that's good and fine yep. let's get back out of this waiting for it to compile do -do 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 -do. here we go Ooh, much nice. Oh! Oh, that's a nice side effect. I like it. Uh, we actually got rid of another uh, jitter also, it seems. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, oh, not answer. Ooh, that is nice. Okay. Now that made it even better, actually. Um, because once you return from Vim, you got a small jitter just as you returned, which, you know, might be acceptable. But um, it appears that was because it redrew a lot of times, <laughs> just as you, as you were returning. Now you, uh, you, you don't get a jitter anymore. That's that's excellent. The only, the only issue I have now is that it might take a little while before it launches the external editor. So you, you press the key combination and it, yeah, no blinks at all. Once you press the key combination, you might have to wait up to a second before it launches. Um, that might be fine. We could maybe show like a message saying something like launching editor. I don't know. One quick thing you can try. Call one. We await in excitement. Add the Ooh, add the pending into the any pending I mean, work pending. Right. Just uh so, something like that, yes. <laughs> Uh, how do I, the upper left spinner will at least indicate something happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. So these are just checking right if right so these are just checking if some kind of state is set to true or false so hmm Should I just set like a like a flag on app, which says launching like um, launching editor type bool. Uh, rather in main directly where any work pending is queried, and and in something from input. Okay. Uh, let's see, main, uh, 
Oh, right. Um... Oh, I'm the wrong thing. Here we go. Here we go. App anywhere pending. Uh, input could return that desired state is not equal to current state. In that case, the spinner should, should rotate, I guess. Yes. Well, you could say that every time you call set poll, every time this changes, does this return like, no, it just stores. You could add that yourself if you want to. Uh, Then you just need a get new getter I add in main where the spinner is drawn. Oh right, because you're thinking um right, right, right. So like a like a get get uh, what's it called? Any work pending on input itself, right? I'm guessing. Then you just check that uh than addition to the app. If yeah, that makes sense, I think. My 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 um yeah yeah, exactly. My thought was that set polling could return somehow, whether or not it changed the polling or not. So if you if you toggled it, basically, it will it will return true. And if you didn't toggle it, if it was already set to what you're trying to set it to, it would return false. So you knew that if you said it was true, something is happening. But your your way is more generic, <laughs> which is, and it kind of follows the same convention as this, which is nice. So I prefer that that I think. I'm all for following conventions that makes code so much easier to reason about. <clears throat> okay, so we need loading graphic, that's fine. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit weird. It, it kind of feels like it's it's really slow, but I, I know that it's just <laughs> waiting around. And I don't think we can get any closer other than really messing up with the no 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 on it okay <laughs> that's quick delivery uh okay let's see um let's just commit this i think
writing uh, commit messages. Um, handling. Oh, setting state. Oh, this is horrible English. State. Oh. Yeah, I'm not gonna keep these uh, these around. Uh, that's a terrible message. <laughs> Right. Um, oh, this is actually quite nice. I like that I've actually made some progress this time. Last time I felt, felt like I just spent like one and a half hour just going in circles. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm just... Uh, Updating my log in my physical notebook here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Nope, that's done. Okay, so I've got two smaller issues that I want to look into. <clears throat> the first one is, uh, let's see, currently, we use the git editor and a variable, then visual, then editor to check for what editor should be launched um, when trying to launch the external editor. Uh, now this is the same order that git uses um, specifically. Committing, wow, that's fast. <laughs> So Stefan suggested that we should fall back to using Vi if nothing is set. Uh, in which case we should probably If we want to launch by, I think we have to check the path to see if there are any known executables called by. Ugh, this is hmm. this is a bit annoying because on Windows the executables have a .exe at the end, so we have to account for that too. I, um, I, oh, this is what I want. Uh, I remember that I looked at a crate, was it called which? Uh, yes. Yeah, so this looks up a path seven hours ago. <laughs> and push this S. Should maybe see that here over here then. Uh, there we go. Nice. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, oh, man. Second time tonight. What am I doing? Here we go. Okay. So I'm guessing that an input now. But it's not input. They're changing, yeah. Right. So, we can now have a look at this. Dun, dun, dun. 
do a rebuild. It's going to be a tiny merge conflict in name where I added the. Yeah, I didn't see a git seem to figure it out. No conflicts it claimed. And it's. I didn't really change anything close to here. I'm guessing it just figured it out by itself. Uh, right. Uh, let's do. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> well, it does show the loading indicator, but we're stuck there. <laughs> uh, hmm. There we go. Oh no, okay. Oh. No, it's fine. <laughs> Just a single swear word in response. Yeah, that didn't go too well. <laughs> uh, let's see. We might have to introduce this, but um, yeah, but it uses probably uses very exact. <laughs> Copy paste bug. Given in a stream without pass separator, looks for name binary name. Yep. Right. Oh, out of update. Uh, Stefan, what do you think of um, uh, regarding the fallback to using Vi if none of the um, environment variables are set? Because um, we, we I, I'm guessing we will have to look up Vi. Or rather, hmm, if we just use command... That would probably work if Vi is set uh, is in the path. And if that fails, so sorry for that. No, that's fine. Uh, let's see. At proper system. That's me. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's try building again. Oh no. Something's wrong with my terminal now. Hmm. Use fire command and see 
Make sure the air is treated properly. We have generic air message box for that already. Yeah. What I'm doing right now is just um, throwing in a anyhow. And I think that, I guess that works. I, I haven't really tested it. <laughs> My editor is it, so it always works. Um, But instead of doing this, then I, I could uh, I would really do, uh, like uh... that will kill the program right now. I think. Okay, I haven't really tested this. <laughs> Um, I just put up something. Um, <clears throat> but I'm guessing we just want to do something like this then. Oh, not like that. But, uh, come on. Poof. There we go. And this. Is it a typo? No. Oh, it wants a string. Right. Let me quickly look up an example somewhere else. Yeah. Sure. Um, oh, this is a change. Uh, let me see. Yay, it works. Woohoo. Commit component commit actually uses the error boxes. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, mm, mm. recognize this, right? Um, because what this does at the moment is that it basically just returns. So in theory, if I run this with visual or get editor set it says vi. Only that should simulate the same condition. We could try just doing, um, uh, let's see, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, visual, rather, visual equals um, blah, blah, blah. We now try to launch this. Yeah, no such file directory. Right. Okay. But if because I have I in my path, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll ls uh, currently. So if I run the same thing, just with I this time. That should work as expected, right? Uh, let's slash you visual, no, uh, editor. Really? Yeah, me. I really like the post we made today. Yeah, me too. Ah. <laughs> it felt like such a 
stand still for a long while there. Okay, why did it launch Vim now? Oh, because it, ah, it actually worked. <laughs> the, fall, <laughs> the fallback worked. <laughs> uh, how nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's uh, make the fallback not work. And see if the... See what, the, what happens then. Uh, yes. Yeah, me too. I'm so happy uh, this uh, is actually close to working now. <clears throat> what I what I see as being left is there is a problem with um, there's a problem with uh, the multiple lines actually being concatenated into a single line at the moment, which I haven't had any time spent any time looking into. I, I just noticed it. I tested it once and I saw that it happened and I didn't look into it anymore. So I'm I'm guessing I'm I'm doing something weird where I'm replacing all the new lines or they're somehow lost on their way to um, what's it called L libgit or something I don't know I have to check that out yes 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 okay so this is working as it should uh, actually let's keep this here and. This just returns an error. Let's see. Let's just uh, grab these seven lines right here, actually. Uh, not commit error, but um, editor launch error. I'll just show the error message. And then return an empty OK. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Let's do the same thing here. Was message unable to read editor command. of our things let's see uh that is right let's see it's all right can't quite remember oh that doesn't seem right <laughs> uh let's see Maybe when a wrap show editor in another call and handle the error it returns in one place. Yeah, that's a, probably a better idea. 
will make this a bit more generic, but uh, I don't think that's necessarily a problem. Yeah, that's probably better. I'm gonna do that. Uh, let's see. Let's just bring those seven lines back with us. And we'll jump to show editor. So this, uh, if let there, with an E. Put me to go now. Yeah, I should probably <coughs> log off me to, uh, too. <laughs> I'm guessing we're in the same time zone, so it's getting pretty late. But it was good having you here, Stefan. Uh, it was it was nice being able to um, to get live feedback and um, and live help for that matter. Should push over, check it tomorrow. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll push up this uh, latest stuff tomorrow uh, or tonight rather. So you'll have to, uh, you can look at it, look at it tomorrow. Thanks for all the good work, put in. Oh, sure. I mean, I want this to, to make this my daily driver. So this is all in self-interest, of course. <laughs> but have, have a good night. And um, I guess we'll, we'll speak on the Discord. Maybe we quickly fix the new lines margin. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, I might want to do some code cleanup before I like sign off on, uh, sign off on it. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Good night. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Failed to launch editor. Uh, yep. Let's just uh, borrow this. this <clears throat> formatting specific are missing yes that is true we did just remove that uh, this should be like so building 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 what song is that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can almost hear the music. Uh, what am I testing? Oh crap, I ruined something. Oh, this should be right. Right. So now it hangs if there's a problem. Well, that's not helpful. Oh. Oh, right. Uh, that might be because I'm returning OK here. Should probably not do that. Right, and now I need to kill it. Uh, let's see. Top. Kill 435. Let's run that again. Okay, there we go. Full launch editor, no such file or directory. 
Okay, that's a really helpful, but uh... But at least it's something. Okay, so nothing happens. <laughs> okay, that's weird. If I wait for five seconds, does anything happen then? No. Okay, that's interesting. Where it, hmm. It doesn't show the error until I press something. This is an internal event. Requires redraw. That that works because it blinks. So now for certain that that's working. And keyboard input is working again, so set polling is set. But this is not processed until I trigger an event. That's interesting. Which is in here. And it's because this isn't called. That is, that is interesting. So that pushes an internal event. Hmm. That doesn't make any sense. Why would it show after pressing the key? This is an input event. Then it goes into this event. Right. Right, so it doesn't trigger anything. Okay, that's interesting. Does that happen to everything? That is a really interesting thing. So it won't show the, the message until push a key because that triggers the processing of the events that have been pushed. Huh. That is... This key won't be processed until you actually do something. Which is unfortunate. I guess. Uh, let me think. <clears throat> think, think, think. So, mm, ah, ah. But all these other ones, they call Right, they call 
here. No, because these are all if it's any of these key events, because this is inside the event function. And right here, they decide whether or not they should Yeah, so this is where it decides whether or not it should update stuff. And I'm guessing that's the key. So maybe an update. Does that work though? That calls update on everything. Does that work? Doesn't hurt to try. Uh, let's see. Where do we go? There. So instead of this, we just sell dot update. And that returns an error, does it? A result, yeah. Let us see. Okay, and you can see the clock is a quarter to uh, to one. So I'm probably going to keep going for like uh, till it's one. And then I'll probably have to sign off. I'm going to work tomorrow after all. Uh, we're still getting the... That's ah, unfortunate. Okay, so that's a problem. So this works, but it doesn't. <laughs> <sighs> but it doesn't show the message until we process the queue, I think. Well, hmm, this is interesting. Process queue. What's it do? Process internal. Show. Where is it? Show error thingy. Here we go. Needs update all and commands. That's when it's, it's supposed to show. Okay, so that means. Let's see how close this. Go back up here somewhere. Where'd you go? This is update. Uh, and when update all, it just does self update. And then commands. But doesn't this. No, it does not. That just updates the commands at the bottom, though. That shouldn't make a difference. Status tab and inspect commit. Those are not included here. So if I'm reading this right, when it shows an error message. Ooh, interesting. It basically just does a self message show message. Hmm. But then it inserts needs update of all and commands. That's interesting. Does anything else in here use self q borrow mute up front clear 
and push back. No, nothing else does. Okay, how about cell dot, uh, what was it called? Um, message show just as one place okay so it's, don't want to split this logic though but we, we could at least uh, let's see do this and do a test we go back up right over here uh, let's see this Uh, so instead of that, let's let's see. Let's change. Take this. We'll put that in a variable like so. Uh, then we want to call. this and there is a lot of errors uh, right right uh, so we can't insert some flags but what we can do is do the same thing so self update and self dot what's it commands yeah active commands Let's try that. And we got another error. Uh, oh, that's really not available. There we go. Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay, so that works. Now the question is though, is it? <laughs> hmm. If we let's do this. Yeah, the only thing that's changed really is just the fact that we... Okay, so let's redo this, remove that. Uh, we will put this back, insert the message here. Let's just borrow it both times. Oh, that didn't go well. What's this command? Uh, uh, non string. Uh, right. Uh, I don't know. Clone. Oh, no, I'm doing both. That doesn't. <laughs> wow. Uh, let's see. Let's take away this. See if. That works. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, that didn't work. Is this line right here? Really? Does it manage without those, though? Yes. Okay. Right. So it needs those to line, this line, to make it work. Oh, 
Okay. I think I'm actually just gonna leave it like that, actually. Yeah. It works. Yeah, I'm leave it. I'm gonna leave it like that. Okay, so we got the message showing when it errors out. Uh, we can probably fix the reference now. Uh, let's see. Go back up a bit. This should now default to buy, like so. So in theory, go over here. We have a look at this, and if we suddenly say that visual should now be uh, code dash w cargo r. That should, in theory, launch code, which is to do code, and wait for it to exit. Yeah, that seems to be working. There we go. Yeah, and it's opened the break file and everything. Excellent. Apparently, there's a new release. And if I close this, Yeah, it returns here. Excellent. Okay, this is working fine. Uh, let's see. So that's that sorted, as they say. Uh, okay. So looking into my notes here. Uh, where are we? Here. Where did my pen go? There we go. Uh, let's see. No editors at the uh, full back to buy. We got that working error if that's not set and that uh, we do uh actually we are Let's see, command, that's a, okay, that's a string slice. Should we maybe just map this error though? So let's map the error. And what we do is I kind of don't want to... Mm. Isn't there any way to... Um... That's not helping much, is it? Uh, let's see. Uh, creates anyhow. What I'm thinking is, what if we wrap the error?
right, so... Anyhow, it supports string interpolation and produces an anyhow error. Yeah, that's right. But... What do I do if I want to just wrap an error? Doesn't really say. So it's basically this status, wait, where you go? Here we go. This one, I want to include, uh, let's have a look at the docs. Oh, those are some nice badges. Uh, let's see, macros, anyhow. Or format string, you can also take any custom type which implements debug and display. Hmm. So, because uh, it is, failed to launch editor. Uh, this is where we instruct that, like so. Maybe do this then. And then we say command and E. Let's do that, and then over here, uh, let's set this to something incomprehensible. Now, when it fails to launch, it should show a message. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, that feels a bit redundant. <laughs> let's uh, let's fine tune this a bit. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Is it really necessary to have anything else than just the name? I think that would, 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 would work just fine, actually. Uh, so if we uh, do this, I think that should be fine. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that works. Let's just do that instead. <clears throat> uh, 
So that is that sorted. Then the final problem is the multi-line thing. Um, then we should probably have this in the, this lockdown or whatever. Yeah. Well guys and gals, I guess that's it for now. Um, I'm gonna go to bed because it's late and I have work tomorrow. Anyway, I'm just gonna write this up in a small commit, I think, and push it to enable Stefan to have a look at it tomorrow. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again sometime. Bye.